back to decaf mat A S M R and a very warm welcome if you are new here. It's good to see you, cutie patootie. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to our little math nook. I hope that you're ready for some relaxation and some fun today. At least I think it's fun. And um Today we're going to take a look at some partial derivatives. We're going to chat a little bit about how they work and then we can do some um, extra practice problems another time, okay? So as usual, um, it doesn't matter whether or not you're actually learning this stuff. Just come as you are. Bring your math homework if you feel like. Bring a little craft if you want to. Some knitting, drawing, doodling. You can do some dishes as you follow along, you can make your bed, or that's if you're feeling productive, <laughs> but you can also come with some heavy eyelids and just to zone in and out and lay back, okay? So partial derivatives, this was another requested topic, thought it was perfect for today. If you've been around, then you probably know that I jump around a lot, and so it's been a while since we've actually talked about derivatives at all. But I'm excited because now we get to move on to another layer of derivatives, okay? So I'm going to just do a little rambling, if that's okay with you, in your general direction. And, um, yeah. Let's begin. So, for partial derivatives, we're often working with functions that have multiple variables, okay? So, so far in our calculus playlist, which you can feel free to check out, um, we've been working with single variable calculus. So, we have functions of one variable. So, a typical, you know, way of writing that out might look like this, just for a little bit of review. Maybe we have something like this, f of x equals x cubed minus 5x. So a function of x is x cubed minus 5x. Sometimes we can write f of x as y, but in this particular case, the way that we have it, it makes it very clear that we are only working with one variable, x, right? We only have x here. And so, if we give you a specific input, a specific value for x, which we'll call our input, basically this is a set of instructions for what to do to get a corresponding output, right? So, if I gave you x is 2, assuming it's within the, what we call the domain valid values, the set of valid values, we don't want to go breaking that, but if, let's say, I give you 2, this says cube that 2, so 2 cubed would be 8, then do 5 times that number, so 5 times 2 is 10, and then find the difference. And the reason I have to do it in that order is because of order of operation. So we cube first and we do multiplication before we subtract. So for 2 it would be 8 minus 10, so that's negative 2, right? I hope that's right. And so f of 2 is negative 2, that kind of thing. So you can do that for inputs and match them with outputs and that's kind of how we get started with the idea of functions, okay? So then when we find the derivative, we're finding the derivative with respect to x. There's only one variable to work with, so it's implied when we write f prime of x like this, um, or even just f prime, or df dx like so, these are different ways to write the first derivative, and with a function like this, it's with respect to x, definitively. So we can write df of x dx, dy dx, where y is f of x, um, or f prime of x. Just be clear what we're taking, like what our function is a function of, and what we're taking the derivative with respect to. So in this case, there's only one variable. The derivative is going to be just based on our rules for finding derivatives, um, 
in single variable calc. So we have our basic derivative shortcuts, so we have um, like x to the power of a constant, so our power rule. We have just memorizing the derivative of e to the x and natural log of x and trig functions and stuff like that. Um, and then we can combine those basic ones using the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, so we can get more complicated functions like that. And those are all just shortcuts that come from the original limit definition of the derivative, just by the actual definition of the derivative. So once you write out some of them longhand, you can often work it out to uh, one of those shortcuts, but then you can just have a derivative table or memorize them, um, then you can do more complicated functions, right? So this is all going to be in our calculus playlist. We can always come back and do a little bit more review, that's okay. But in this case, you know, we would see that we have something minus something, and a property of the derivative is that we can then take the derivative of this thing, then subtract the derivative of this thing. For this, it's x to the power of a constant, so the derivative is going to be 3x squared. So you pull that in front, keep the x, and do one less than this, and then we have a minus 5. Okay? So, um, we can start with the single variable case. I think it's important to kind of draw a parallel when you start doing partial derivatives because it can be kind of messy, okay? So just make sure that you take some time to have those rules down, that you feel comfortable again. If it's been a while, just come back and make sure you can find um, some basic derivatives as well that you feel comfortable with, um, with, uh, with those basic derivative rules, okay? So for partial derivatives, we, um, it's actually very similar. But we now have a function of multiple variables like we said, so let's just go ahead and write 2 first. So we would have a function of x and y, and let me just write down a um, typical first equation. I wrote one down, but let's say we have negative x to the fourth y cubed plus 4x squared y. Something like this. So now you see we have a function of two variables. My input is going to be an input for x and an input for y. Again, assuming that it doesn't break the math. Um, but we have x and y here, so our set of instructions is a bit more complicated, a little bit more tedious if you're trying to calculate it out, but it's the same idea, right? This says do a negative of my first number to the fourth times um, the second number cubed, when it's all smushed together, it's multiplication. And then plus 4 times my first number squared times the second number, okay? So, the rule is um, for partial derivatives. It's actually pretty straightforward, but the calculating can be a little bit complicated if we're not very clear. <laughs> so, when we do the partial, We'll do the partial derivative, like this little curly D thing, that's how I like to draw it, but um, partial of F with respect to X. Now, before we only had X's, right? So we took a derivative of the function with respect to X, but if we take the derivative of this thing with respect to X, it's only like partly a derivative, if that makes sense. We're going to just kind of ignore the Y bits. So what we're going to do when we do this is we look at the x parts and then we treat all of the other variables, so in this case just y, but it could be z, w, whatever, however many, we treat those all as though they are constants, okay? So we work out the entire derivative, ignoring the other variables, like treating them as constants and working as though they are, and then take the derivative with respect to just x in this case, okay? So, uh, let's work that out here. That's the only rule that we need to know. So when we're taking the partial derivative with respect to a particular variable, you treat all of the other variables as though they are constants, okay? So it sounds 
straightforward, but depending on the question, depending on the function, uh, we still have to be very clear with what our single derivative rules um, would be needed. Sometimes we need a chain rule when it doesn't seem like it, or sometimes it seems like we're using the product rule but we don't need to, that kind of stuff, okay? So let's look at this. If we're taking the derivative with respect to x here, that means y is a constant. We're going to treat this as a constant here. So again, this is a constant, this is a constant, and we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So I see an x to the fourth here and an x squared here, and there's a plus, and that's fine. So here, you might think, okay, well, I have something times something, so I'm going to use the product rule. However, um, if y were a constant, right, let's say y is 2, 2 cubed is 8, that doesn't matter. If I were to say, what's the derivative of negative 8x to the 4th, you might not jump straight to the product rule, right? You could just pull out the constant, the negative 8, and then just do the derivative of x to the 4th to get negative 32x cubed, right? So you could theoretically do the product rule between the constant and the x to the fourth, but it's really like that over complicating it because you'll get a derivative of the constant part being zero and it goes away anyway. So the derivative of a constant times um, whatever function you is um, the constant times the derivative of the function. You can pull that out. It's one of our properties of the derivative. So being clear with that first will save you a lot of time because now we treat y cubed instead of it being specifically 2. It can be any constant, you just pull that out. So we'd have a negative y cubed times and then the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed, like so. Okay, then we have a plus and then if y is a constant again, so if it's 1 or whatever you want it to be, um, we would have four times that y is a constant. So we just pull that out, and then the derivative of x squared is 2x, like so, okay? So, in this case, it's nice because we just have nice multiplication here. If you're stuck with a really complicated question, um, just you can kind of mentally try out some constants to give you a little bit of intuition. Um, I'll give you an example, like if we had um, something that involves the product rule or the chain rule, like the natural log of, uh, uh, I'm not sure, okay, the natural log of 2x plus y or something like that. Um, I'll have to write one down for you. But if you are uncertain how to do it, don't default necessarily to just splitting everything up or distributing everything, because sometimes that's not quite right. Um, instead, think of it as though you have an actual constant there and how you would find the derivative. So that really will come down to making sure that you understand the original um, derivative rules with one variable to begin with, okay? So here we're going to clean this up. Let's put the negative 4 at this point, you can write in whatever order you want. Um, you might do, you know, negative 4x cubed, y cubed. I'll just leave it like this. 4 times 2 is 8, y, x. And that's our answer for the partial derivative with respect to x, okay? Um, I tend to like to leave, um, you know, if the partial with respect to x, um, makes y a constant, or we think of y as a constant, we leave it alone. I leave all that in the front, and then I tend to leave the variable that we're finding the derivative of next, um, but that's up to you, and it depends on what kind of analysis you'll do with this afterwards, okay? But that's the idea. And then let's do the partial with respect to y. It's the exact same idea, but we now treat the other variable x as the constant. So let me just go ahead and recopy this question. A negative x to the fourth y cubed plus 4x squared y. So you just go back to the original question. Okay, so we 
finished the partial with respect to x, now we want the partial with respect to y. So we treat x as though it's a constant, so we leave um, that as it is, like as a whole thing. And then we have this one as a constant, so we're finding the derivative of y cubed with respect to y and y with respect to y. If x to the fourth, we leave that there. The derivative of y cubed, I don't know if you can see that, but from here, the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared. Then we have a plus 4x squared, and the derivative of y is 1, so we just leave it. Anything times 1 is itself, right? So we just have 4x squared. So from here, again, it's probably easier to see, but we take x as though it's a constant, so negative x to the fourth, we can just pull to the side. y cubed, the derivative of that is 3y squared, so it's negative x to the fourth times 3y squared plus, and then 4x squared, that's going to be a constant. The derivative of y is 1, so it just goes away. Clean this up a little bit, so negative 3x to the fourth y squared plus 4x squared. And that is it for the derivative with respect to y. So you can see here that the reason that this is often a typical kind of um, first kind of question for partial derivatives, it's not always the case, but I find that a lot of times when partial derivatives are first introduced, this is a typical question because it looks complicated and it looks kind of scary and has a lot of stuff going on, but it's actually not that bad. It's just basically a polynomial in terms of both, like if we were to treat the other variable as a constant for x's, we have negative stuff times x to the fourth plus four stuff times x squared, that's just a polynomial, right? For y, we have negative stuff times y cubed plus four stuff times y. So when we treat one or the other as a constant, we get polynomials, which is one of our very first basic single variable derivatives. So that's why we often start here. Okay, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. If this is a lot here, I just wanted to introduce the idea. Feel free to just write this down and give it a try. Please confirm my answers, by the way. Um, but I wanted to get you started for this. So, of course, then we can introduce stuff with trig functions like cosine, sine, tangent, all of those. We can introduce anything that we did with the single variable case. We can now introduce multiple variables and work it out as though all of the others are constants. Hopefully that should cover anything you'll need to get started, um, but uh, take your time with it for sure. If you find that you're working through some questions and you're just almost there but a little bit off, then maybe it has to do with like not applying the chain rule or something like that or a product rule. Maybe you're oversimplifying what you can distribute, so to speak, um, but hopefully that kind of gets you going. Um, so I'll try and come up with a list of other questions that um, have to do with, you know, other functions um, that can apply more rules other than just polynomials, but uh, we'll do that in the near future, okay? Okay, well, I hope that this was helpful if you're learning it. Otherwise, it's been really fun having you join me. I'll see you around for more math, more random math very, very soon. Take good care, okay? Go have some water, sleep, whatever you need to take care of yourself. I'm sending much, much love. Bye-bye.